today we're gonna be talking about spontaneous combustion. Just kidding, I'm back. Sorry to disappoint. That was the effects, if you couldn't tell. This video is inspired by a friend of mine whose family recently actually had an oil rag fire on their farm. They had contractors over to refresh the wood in the barn, and at the end of the day, they left all of their oily rags in a pile in the middle. It self-ignited at some point overnight, and it burned little holes in their concrete floor luckily leaving the barn structure intact, but not everyone is that lucky. This is a horror story woodworkers hear over and over. Be careful with your rags. You never know when they will spontaneously combust, which is insane because as far as I thought, spontaneous combustion should be contained to sci-fi movies and pop culture. Oh dear, what is it? I've spontaneously combusted. Oh, I am sorry. Oh, it's quite all right. I've grown tired of living. Oh, but it actually happens. It's something you have to think about when you work with certain materials and certain chemicals or oils. If you aren't careful, you might walk out of your workshop without a care in the world and come back to a roaring fire that has started itself. But it turns out there's quite a few things which have been known to spontaneously combust. You've got coal, hay, the aforementioned oily rags, several reported cases of electric cars bursting into flames because of their lithium ion batteries overheating. And get this, we've also seen spontaneously combusting nacho chips and sushi rolls. Do they get to charge extra for those? It kind of feels like when your bartender like sprinkles cinnamon on your flaming tiki drink. I would pay extra, personally. It's an interesting list, but of course, if you were alive in the 90s, I know what you're wondering. What about people? Does it ever really happen? The short answer seems to be no, not really. I hate to burst your bubble this early in the video, but people don't actually spontaneously combust. It turns out all of the stories out there are either just myths or misunderstandings of what actually happened. And humanity has a flair for the dramatic, so there's a lot of those stories floating around. You've got the case of Mary Reeser in 1951, found as a pile of ashes with only one leg remaining. Margaret Hogan in 1970, supposedly combusted in her home in Dublin, Ireland. Beatrice Oxy, 1979, Illinois. Henry Thomas, 1980, South Wales. Michael Faraday, 2010, Galway, Ireland. And a bunch of other ones stretching all the way back to some of the earliest recorded cases in the Middle Ages. You know, when documentation was at its peak. I saw it on Middle Age Facebook. But the truth is, in each and every one of those cases, the bodies were only found after the fact, meaning that none of the moments of spontaneous combustion were captured on film or in any other verifiable way. Plus, in just about every case, there were sources of fire nearby, which were likely the real initial cause of the burning. If something is super flammable, sometimes all it can take is a tiny spark or introduction to heat to set things ablaze. But that doesn't make it spontaneous combustion. It's more like, subtly prompted combustion, or just combustion. What is much more likely is that these unfortunate folks were victims of flammable clothing and or other products which coated parts of their body and essentially turned them into a wick, which was set alight by some kind of nearby flame. Judging by the time frame and locations of a lot of these people, I would personally put money on hairspray, perfume, and cigarettes, but that's just me. At that point, if the conditions were just right, you could be kept burning by the flammability of human fat which in this case works just like wax in a candle and is also really gross. So to be clear, as far as recorded history and actual science is concerned, the truly spontaneous combustion of a human being is not a thing that has ever happened. But is there some way in which somehow, theoretically in the land of spherical cows, it could actually happen? Well. Maybe, but let's talk about the more possible stuff first. Let's dive into the basics of how spontaneous combustion really occurs and what actually qualifies as true spontaneous combustion. In order for a chemical reaction to officially be considered spontaneous combustion, it has to be self-starting. For instance, if you did the old magnifying glass to focus sunlight on a piece of paper to ignite it thing, that wouldn't be spontaneous combustion. That would be you introducing enough heat from an outside source, in this case the sun, to exceed the ignition temperature of a material, in this case the piece of paper, to light it on fire. In contrast to that, a true spontaneous combustion requires the material itself to generate its own heat and kick off its own ignition, rather than an outside source of flame or heat igniting it on fire. Independent queen. In the case of the oily rags, the nacho chips, and the sushi, well, technically it was the tempura flakes on the sushi, the real culprit was the oil. So let's dive in, not into the oil. That's gross, into the science. As oil dries, molecules in the oil interact with the oxygen in air and start to undergo a process called polymerization, in which long chains called polymers are formed. 
You've probably seen oils start to turn like filmy and thick, like even kitchen oils, and this is what causes that. This process is not too dissimilar to the oxidation process of rusting. The relevant thing as far as spontaneous combustion is concerned is that the polymerization process is what we would describe as exothermic. That means it actually releases more energy than it consumes. The reason for that is that as the polymers form, you have atoms becoming bonded, which were previously separate. When atoms share electrons to form a covalent bond, they achieve a more stable configuration with lower potential energy compared to when they're separate. Because the atoms are going from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, that means that there is extra energy which is going to get released in the process. And as you may have guessed by now, that extra energy which gets released is heat. Under the right conditions, for instance, if there isn't an opportunity for the heat to be dispersed or to flow away, like in this case, trapped within a pile of crumply rags, the energy buildup keeps making things hotter and hotter, which actually speeds up the process of polymerization, which keeps making things hotter in a vicious cycle known as a runaway exothermic reaction, until the thing just lights on fire. That's why it's strongly recommended that if you're leaving oily rags around, you at least flatten them out so that the heat generated as the oil polymerizes gets a chance to disperse into the air. Or if you wanna be extra safe, you can leave them in a can of water or one of those like special cans. Also, as I mentioned before, that oil polymerization is similar to the process of iron rusting. Therefore, you might ask, is rusting metal also undergoing an exothermic reaction? Technically, yes. Rusting is exothermic, but at a unnoticeably slow rate. So I am really not worried about my pile of rusty nails catching on fire. Tetanus though, it's a different story. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but those green super food, vitamin whatever powders that your Gen Z intern convinced you to start drinking, useless. Turns out the amount of water you drink alongside water soluble vitamins and minerals affects how much you absorb. So if you take those nutrients from water, either in pill or powder form, you're just going to pee them right back out. But don't worry, today's sponsor Groons is here to save you from wasting money on gross, expensive, and ineffective supplements. My new year's resolution is to live a healthier lifestyle and Groons is the perfect place to start. Groons are a convenient, comprehensive formula packed into eight gummies a day. This isn't just a multivitamin, greens, gummy, or probiotic. It's all of those things and then some at a fraction of the price. And unlike other supplements, it actually tastes good. It's like eating fruit snacks without any artificial colors or flavors, and they're vegan, nut-free, gluten-free, and dairy-free. The pocket-sized packs are super convenient for tossing into your lunchbox as a healthy treat or for keeping in your car as an on-the-go snack. And they're packaged and proportioned with care. With Groons, you're getting a safe, easily absorbed dose of vitamins and minerals you need to crush your day-to-day. -day. And the best part is Groons is offering us up to 45% off if you click the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen. That is up to 45% off by clicking the link in my description or scanning the QR code on the screen. Thank you so much to Groons for sponsoring this video. Now, back to it. And while we're talking about safety and runaway exothermic reactions, I figured I would mention another really common runaway exothermic reaction for fans of this channel, which is mixing and curing epoxy. Now I want to note here that epoxy does not spontaneously combust. Its exothermic reaction is caused by you, the little maker chaos gremlin, mixing the two-part mixture together. But the process of curing is exothermic and aided by heat, which will make it cure faster and produce more heat in a quick and vicious cycle. And the advice for this, just like with rags is to spread the epoxy out over a large flat area if possible. My point is that there are lots of things which cause exothermic reactions just by sitting around and interacting with the surrounding air. And if these reactions are strong enough, they can lead to spontaneous combustion. Beyond those examples, you've also got to be careful with oil-based paints, compost heaps and manure piles, even pool cleaning chemicals like chlorine. Calcium hypochlorate, sodium hypochlorate are strong oxidizers, which means that they can combust if they come in contact with oils, fuels, or even organic materials like cardboard. And the science behind all of these combustion risks comes down to the basic chemistry of exothermic reactions. In the case of hay, which I mentioned earlier, it's actually a pretty surprising fact that slightly wet hay is more likely to spontaneously combust than completely dry hay is. And the reason for this is that undried hay heats up as the plant material continues to respire. Basically, it keeps doing like plant things into death a little bit and expelling oxygen for a while. And microorganisms such as fungi and bacteria break down complex carbohydrates. The hay also serves as insulation for itself, just like the oily rag pile scenario. So the larger the bale or stack, the less cooling that occurs to offset the heat and therefore the greater risk of ignition. Hey there, I'm Hereta Runyarday from the Hypothetical Universe's OSHA department. You can call us Quosha. This universe is overdue for a safety check. I need to double check whether or not a few key things you have around here can explode. 
spontaneously. First off, we have humans. Can humans spontaneously explode? For a true spontaneous combustion to occur, you need an internal source of heat and some sort of flammable material which could potentially ignite if enough heat is generated. And when it comes to flammable substances naturally occurring inside the human body, you are basically limited to fat, which is distributed throughout the body, and methane gas, which is produced by bacteria in the gut. And there's also your hair, which can definitely catch on fire, but it's outside your body, so if I'm feeling nice, I might let it slide today. Okay, so we've got some flammable materials which could potentially ignite, but is there an internal heat source to be found inside the body? Well, you might have heard of something called the mitochondria, you know, the powerhouse of the cell. They're organelles which exist inside of human cells, which were once an independent organism, which is pretty trippy to think about, and which serve as the primary source of our cell's energy in the form of ATP. Now, this isn't biology OSHA, BOSHA. <laughs> So I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty details of how mitochondria generate energy or the process by which that energy is then utilized. But the point is they do it. And in doing it, they get hot. And that means I've got my peepers on them. In fact, studies have shown that a working mitochondria tends to maintain a temperature of roughly 50 degrees Celsius or 122 Fahrenheit, which is substantially hotter than the overall internal temperature of the human body, which tends to sit around 36.66 Celsius or 98.6 Fahrenheit for all you Americans still stuck in the past. So in theory, if somehow all of the mitochondria in your cells were to suddenly go into massive overdrive, it could maybe be possible for your internal body temperature to increase by 40%, 50%, something like that. That would be quite the fever, might even kill you. but would it actually ignite any of the flammable elements of the human body? Well, let's see, we got the auto ignition temperature of methane, it's approximately 537 degrees C, which is like a thousand F, so it's probably a no-go on a methane fire. And fat is like 310 to 360 C, which is 590 to 680 F, not hot enough for that either. Lastly, the ignition temperature of human hair is generally considered to be around 220 degrees C. So no, not even, I guess, in the wildest version of the body producing its own heat, it gets anywhere near the heat needed to cause legitimate spontaneous combustion without the introduction of some outside source of heat or an outside source of a more readily flammable material with a lower auto ignition temperature. That's a different department on um, self-combustion only. And that also doesn't even touch the fact that y'all are basically sacks of water, so. Actually, that takes me to the next one on my list, water. Can water explode? All right, you're probably thinking, if the human body can't realistically spontaneously combust, then water definitely won't. First off, don't disrespect me, smarty pants. But yeah, you're, you're right. Traditionally speaking, water is definitely not flammable and doesn't even really have an auto ignition temperature because way before it could light on fire, it will start to boil. But in theory, if you were to put water under extreme pressure and thus prevent it from boiling, at a temperature of roughly 2,200 Celsius, the H2O molecules themselves would start to lose integrity and you would start getting free-released hydrogen atoms, which are actually very flammable, and I will have to write you up for that. And they have a way lower auto-ignition temperature of around 585 Celsius. So really, it would be the pure hydrogen which would spontaneously combust in that scenario. But still, it could happen, and that's a Huosha violation. And in fact, this is what happens during electrolysis of water, where an electricity is used to separate the hydrogen and oxygen in water in order to harvest hydrogen fuel. And because hydrogen and oxygen are super reactive, the mixture can also be highly explosive. So you have to be really careful during this process. But again, that's a little different than water itself spontaneously combusting, since you have to introduce electricity or some huge amount of outside heat and pressure. The idea of that much heat somehow just spontaneously being generated by the water itself is basically impossible, unless, and this is where my job gets really fun, if you wanna fall down a really fun mathy rabbit hole, because the Navier-Stokes equations still remain unsolved, no one has mathematically proven that water can't spontaneously combust. But for our purposes today, I think it's safe enough. We can pass. All right, what else did I have on my list here? Oh, nothing. That's right, can nothing explode? This one is a bit more theoretical, but then again, so is the universe. So let's have at it. Nothingness, the vacuum, the absence of stuff. How could that possibly explode? Well, we need to consider vacuum energy, the theoretical energy that is thought to permeate all of space, arising from the quantum fluctuations of fields. Essentially, it's the energy of empty space. And the basic idea is that according to quantum mechanics and the uncertainty principle, there are always fluctuations in energy happening, even in entirely empty vacuums. 
Some physicists have theorized that this vacuum energy could be one of the driving forces behind the observed accelerated expansion of the universe. So basically what I'm saying is that in any given spot, at any given time, even a totally empty spot in the middle of space, there could suddenly be an indeterminate amount of energy that just pops out of nowhere and goes boom. So maybe the universe is spontaneously combusting all the time, all over the place. Now that, that smells like a violation. I'm gonna have to report this. Oh, Gary's gonna have a field day. All right, I hope you had a blast. See what I did there. Don't forget to like and subscribe or you might spontaneously combust, even if it's not actually possible. I will make it possible. Anyway, happy new year. Buy my merch, just cause Christmas is over doesn't mean it's too late. And many, many thanks to the following patrons for supporting my channel. Like I said before, animations and like upped production value are kind of expensive. So if you like it, let me know.